looking at a uh, 46 inch LED backlit LCD uh, television by Samsung model UN46 FH6030F so I've taken the back off we've got the normal layout we've got the uh, the input panel the main panel the uh, T-com board down the bottom here and then the power supply over there so plugging this in we do have the standby light uh, let's see if it powers on and yep it does power on let's see what happens Not, oh. Well, there is a picture, but it's very, very, very dark. And that usually means LEDs, backlight. So I'm going to plumb for backlighting issues. Looks like there's a complete bar out there. This is where the LEDs get their uh, power from. And it looks like there's four four independent bars of LEDs to provide the backlighting so what I'm going to do is actually test each one of these strips uh, with an, an LED backlight tester to uh, see what, what's going on so with the first pair of contacts here We've got about 19 volts across the strip. It's taking just over f uh, well, almost 6 milliamps. So I'm going to compare each strip, see how they compare. And the next pair of contacts, we've got 20 volts and 6 milliamps. So far, so good. The next pair of contacts are taking zero current. And this backlight will, uh, this backlight tester will actually su supply up to 300 volts or 333 volts right now. And it's the LED strips taking zero zero current. It's a current limited uh, power supply. So it does look like that strip is has failed completely. And this last pair of contacts, uh, we're only getting 12 volts and it's taking 6.3 milliamps. So there's definitely something uh, different with that uh, last pair of contacts. So that last strip may have um, some shorted LEDs on there. So the next job is to take the whole television apart, take the uh, the front screen, the front bezel off the front screen and um, separate the LCD panel from the, from the front of the uh, television and that's going to involve disconnecting these ribbons here and undoing a lot of clips all the way around the edge of the uh, television so I can remove the front bezel and then the uh, bezel that holds the, LE the uh, LCD screen against the LED backlight system so that's the, uh, the next process moved all the panels from the inside of the television I can uh, start working on the other side and uh, remove the bezel bezels the bezels removed from the uh, the top bezel has been removed now comes the more delicate task of moving the connections from the L from the um, LCD panel and these you've got to be very careful with because if you break one of these ribbons uh, the television scrap so uh, you have to be very careful with these so 
So now what I've done, I've lifted all these buffer strips here um, and taped them to the front side of the LED panel so that they're out of the way and they're not going to flop around and tear these ribbons. And like I said before, if you do tear these uh, ribbon connectors, then um, you might as well scrap the TV because uh, you'd need a complete new LCD panel. And now remove the LED panel and that has left the diffusers in place and that's what I'll be removing next is uh, these diffusers. To remove the diffusers you have to remove this second bezel and there's a bunch of clips that go all the way around the outside that you have to release. So. Uh, that's what I'm doing next and uh, that will allow me to remove this uh, second bezel and then get to the diffusers. So this TV, because of its size, they decided to make the bezel in four parts. Sometimes the bezel just comes off in one piece, but in this case they've separated the, uh, the bezel into uh, a top, bottom and and the two sides which can all come off independently. Obviously keep track of where all these parts go because uh, you've got to reassemble it. Now the second bezel layer is removed we can get to the actual diffusers and lift off the diffusers and if you look carefully you can see there's several layers so we've got at least two layers. We've got the um, we've got a thin layer on the top here, and then a thicker layer underneath. And then underneath there, you can see the LEDs for the backlight. So now we remove these diffusers and set them aside carefully. So you don't want to break them. You don't want to get them dirty. Uh, so set those aside carefully. So now we've gained access to the LEDs and we have this white reflective surface that helps to spread the light around and um, this will have to come off but to remove this there's various um, pieces here there's this support for the diffusers there's a couple of these in place four of these and then from the other side we have to remove these clips that also uh, well actually those clips hold these the strips in place so initially what we've got to do is just remove these uh, LED, uh, the uh, LCD supports and diffuser supports so that's what I'll do now so I've removed the four diffuser supports and that will give us access now to the LEDs which are underneath this white reflective panel so I'll remove that panel we can take a closer look at the LEDs so now we can see the four strips of LEDs and they're actually in two parts so each strip is actually joined in the center so there's eight pieces in total well, this TV looks like it's in a pretty poor state. Uh, let's see, there's that's one, two, three, four, five, six dead LEDs on that strip. None of the LEDs are lighting on that second strip. So, we've probably got at least one open circuit. On the, on the previous strip, there were the faulty LEDs had gone short circuit, so the uh, the working LEDs were still able to light. On this strip, the uh, there's none of them are lighting, so that means that um, the uh, at least one of the LEDs has gone open circuit, preventing uh, the rest from lighting because they're all in series. Okay, this next one we've got. Uh, the first two are faulty, so 
so that one's working. So one, two, three, three LEDs have failed, gone short circuit on that strip. And the last one, let's see, we've got one, two, three, four, five LEDs on that strip that have failed on short circuit. So that's five out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven. Eleven per strip. Uh, so five of them have failed. So pretty much 50% failure rate on that strip. The thing to do is remove all these little clips that hold the strips in place and there's a bunch of them that you have to remove from the other side and uh, you're squeezing the uh, the clip from the other side and these will pop out that should then release the uh, the aluminum strips which hold all the LEDs then uh, identify which of the LEDs are faulty and after that remove the lenses these just pop off they have to be glued back in place or replaced uh, I do have replacement uh, uh, lenses for the LEDs but um, in the meantime I'll uh, take all these strips out and uh, we'll see what we've got so I've removed all the LED strips from the uh, from the back panel and I've numbered them just to uh, keep the pairs not that it really matters but uh, you know I numbered the uh, the pairs and also numbered the locations where they uh, when they go back um, like I say, not that that's really necessary. So now it's down to testing each strip and replacing them as necessary. For reworking the LEDs, um, I have this hot plate, and what uh, what I do is I heat each individual LED, uh, remove them, uh, replace them, because uh, they're all surface mount on this aluminum strip and it's very difficult to just use a regular soldering iron to uh, exchange the LEDs so I use a combination of the um, heat plate and um, uh, liquid uh, solder paste and flux and then these lenses uh, will often pop off when you warm them up warms up the glue underneath and um, then you need to replace the LEDs and then replace the lens afterwards so it's quite a laborious task but uh, uh, it's worth it in the end if um, you know if you get the uh, TV relatively inexpensively this one actually came from the uh, recycling center and um, you know I spotted it and thought well there's a good chance it's going to be an LED issue and sure enough it, uh, it is an LED problem. So I've been through and tested the uh, all the LED strips and the individual LEDs and I've removed the lens caps off the uh, faulty ones and if you look closely you can see a brown area or a darkened area here around the LEDs and that's a, um, a sign that they overheated and uh, that's probably why they burned out. These aluminum strips should be fastened closely to the back panel and I think that's one of the failings that even though they are clipped down they don't they don't fasten too well to the back panel and also when people turn up the backlight to 100% they're really driving these LEDs hard and uh, before too long they fail so anyway so I've been through and removed all the lens caps off all the faulty LEDs uh, you can see the darkened area around this one and this one um, let's see yeah some more darkened area here and around this one here this one's not so uh, so dark but I mean they're all going to be a little bit uh, darkened 
from use but uh, some of them you can see are a lot darker than others and those are all the lens caps all the lens uh, covers that I've removed so far and with a bit of luck I, I can reuse these I'll, uh, I should be able to just glue them back on a little bit of um, a little bit of super glue some of these lens covers differ um, if you notice, if you look closely, you can see the three legs that are in the uh, just around the centre, uh, and that's the, uh, the three supports. Some of them differ; they have the um, the three supports around the edge, and uh, I believe that's when they're for LG televisions, as opposed to uh, this type, which are for the Samsung televisions and uh, like I say the Samsung have the uh, three supports close to the, the LED itself you can see they um, you can see they surround the LED quite closely now the problem with the if the lens caps were supported by the outer diameter of the uh, or, or perimeter of the lens cap then in some cases you'd have trouble mounting them back on the strip because you wouldn't have enough width of this strip really to support the lens so it's important that you do get the right uh, lens covers for the job and uh, you can order these online but be very careful because there's a lot of variants. The faulty LEDs removed, so it's just a case of uh, finding the correct replacements now and putting them back on these boards or strips. That's where I've removed one. This is the solder paste that I'm using to replace the faulty LEDs. You only need a tiny tiny spot of this uh, paste. All the LED strips back in place secured I just need to reinstall the lenses on the LEDs that I've replaced. So I'm now testing each strip individually and that's the one. Let's check this one. Uh, that one's okay. That one's okay. That was me. That one's okay. Uh, let's go on to the next strip. And that's a fully working strip. And finally, so we get on with this strip. Okay, and all the lens caps are now on as well, so time to reassemble this uh, television. All the LEDs are now lighting up after replacing all the faulty ones. So now it's put it all back together white reflective surface is back in place and the supports for the diffusers are also uh, back in place have the diffusers back in place plus the the first bezel is back on so now I have the LCD panel back in place and uh, have the corners lined up properly that's very important otherwise you crack the corners of the LCD panel so that's all lined up now and now that needs a good clean before I put the rest of it uh, on I've still got the uh, connections for the LCD panel taped up I have to untape those put those back into place 
now the LED uh, connections are all back in their respective places so that's uh, another part of the job out the way now I've got the LCD panel back in place and cleaned removing all the uh, fingerprints don't forget to put the speakers back in place I nearly forgot and they plug in to here don't forget to just go around and snug all the screws up on the various boards that have been removed don't over tighten them of course and make sure the antenna is this way up otherwise it's going to block the back panel from going back on also don't forget to return the these ribbon cables back to their relevant positions there is a little black line on the ribbon cable that should be just visible uh, outside of the clip that holds the ribbons in place let's try the acid test as they say see if everything works and there's a Samsung logo uh, and that's the channel information and a blank raster meaning there's no signal right now but uh, at least it's a bright screen first thing to do with any of these uh, LED TVs when you get them is go to the backlight setting and you can see I've turned it down now and um, turn that down to about 50% or uh, somewhere between 50 and 70% because if you have that cranked up to 100% there's a good chance you're going to burn out the LED backlight strips and shorten the life of the TV so that's a, uh, a good tip actually is to go to the, uh, the backlight setting and turn that down it, uh, it was cranked all the way up to uh, well the settings 20 on this but um, it doesn't have to be that high at all it's uh, plenty uh, bright enough mid setting and uh, it'll extend the life of your television and just to show everything's working fine there's the uh, the result of replacing all the LEDs on the backlight strips well not all the LEDs but the majority of LEDs so again thanks for watching if you wanted to copy this at home then you do so at your own risk obviously it's very dangerous uh, working on televisions there's high voltages inside you have to be very careful so like I say if you uh, if you do copy any of this you do so at your own risk thanks for watching